This program is in the Fortran pseudo code, so that's what you need to observe here. Hello everyone, I welcome all of you to the very interesting session on software testing. So guys, what is that I have today? So I will be discussing a wonderful problem that is commission problem. What exactly the commission problem is all about? So let me discuss this problem in today's session. Before that, I recommend all of you to have a notepad next to you. So guys, so please have a notepad next to you before I start my explanation on the question. So let's get into that. So I have uh, divided this question into multiple different parts because to make you feel easy and comfortable. So before I start the explanation on the question what they have given, so I would like to give you some of the images which will help you to understand this question. So what is that? So guys, this is what I will call it as a prerequisites of a question. So what is that? So let's understand this. Okay, this is what I will call it as a stock of a gun. So why are you speaking about the guns today? Yes, this is going to be very important with respect to your question. Let's understand this. This is what I will call it as a stocks of a gun. This is what I will call it as a barrels of the gun. Please understand. So hope you have uh, no, heard about the word called double barrel. Right. So you have double holes. Right. So this is what I will call it as a double barrel and single barrel. So this is what I will call it as a barrel of a gun. And this is what I will call it as a locks of a gun. So fine. You, you have uh, heard about three words now. Stocks of a gun. Barrels of a gun and locks of a gun. So fine. So let's get into the problem now. So what is the question that I have? So please listen to me carefully. It's going to be very important. If you don't understand the question, then you will not understand the program too. So I, I feel that you need to spend a little time here before we get into the program. So listen to me carefully now. So what are the first point says a rifle salesperson. I'm speaking about the rifle. That's very important that you need to understand. There is a rifle salesperson, okay, from uh, former Arizona territory who sold the rifle parts, that is locks, stocks and barrels made by a gunsmith in Missouri. So that's what you need to understand. So fine, we understood that. So please understand they have also given the cost for each and every parts that they are selling. So what is that they have given? So for locks, they charge $45 and for stocks, they charge $30 and for the barrels, they charge $25. So fine, we got to know that there is a salesperson who is selling the rifle parts, locks, stocks and barrels and they have given the cost. So this is what you need to understand from this point. If you have that in your mind, that's more than enough. The second point goes like this. The salesperson had to sell one lock, one stock, one barrel that's a very important information that you need to understand salesperson had to sell at least one lock one stock one barrel that's very important please observe my words so he can sell one lock one stock one barrel but not the complete rifle that's a very important information that you need to keep it in your mind that is what the second point says so finally understood the second point what exactly the third point is all about. In the third point, they speak about the production limit. So what is that they are speaking? Production limit were such that most salesperson could sell in a month was 70 locks, 80 stocks and 90 barrels. So fine. So this is what you need to understand. So I'm not stressing on this point. So why? I will tell you later. And the next important point you need to observe after visiting each town, I am the salesperson, after visiting each town, I will send a short telegram to the manufacturer, I will send a short telegram to the manufacturer saying that how many stocks, how many locks, how many barrels that I have sold. So that is the information that I am sending, that's what you need to understand here. At the end of the month, at the end of the month, the salesperson sent a very short telegram saying that, okay, one lock sold saying that one lock sold at the end of the month he will just send one short message saying that one lock sold so this is what you need to remember i will come to this point so one lock sold at the end of the month one lock sold so fine 
we understood this what is that i need to understand from this point so one block sold at the end of the month that's what you need to remember one block sold after visiting each and every town so he will send how many locks how many barrels how many stocks he sold he will be keep on updating okay updating so as and as and when he moves on to the different different towns he will be keep updating the manufacturer so that is what you need to observe so it will be going on a loop all right that's what you need to observe here so fine very important part of the question i have arrived to the important part of the question so please make a note of it suppose if i have done the business of thousand dollars including all the sales i have done the business of thousand dollars i am the salesperson i have done the business of thousand dollars suppose if i have done the business of thousand dollars i will get 10 percent commission how, how, how much i will get i will get 10 percent commission so that's what you need to understand suppose if i have done thousand dollars business okay i will get how much 10 percent commission suppose i have done the business more than thousand and below thousand eight hundred so thousand to thousand eight hundred okay so if my business is between this range so what is the commission that i will get i will get 15 percent so I will get how much 15 percent you need to understand one thing for thousand okay I, for thousand what is the commission so you will get 10 percent above that above thousand whatever you have done till 1800 for that amount you will get 15 percent that is the second point that you need to observe and more interestingly suppose if you have done the business above 1800 so whatever you have done above 1800 for that difference amount so you will get 20 percent commission so this is what you need to understand and this is what we are trying to implement in the program that's what you need to listen to me fine i think you have seen this already let's get into the program now quickly so guys this program is in the fortran pseudo code so that's what you need to observe here so what is that we have uh, given so it's very simple i will explain line by line word by word so keep listening to me carefully and make a note of each and everything so guys in the first line what is that i have done is i have declared three variables so don't worry about this this is what declaring a variable that's why we, that, that's what we have written at dim in the photon don't worry about this so i have declared a variable called lock stocks and barrels and it stores the integer value it stores the integer value that is the data type that we have given so fine then after that we have declared three more variables that is lock price stock price and barrel price and it stores the value in terms of real real in the sense you all know that we have something called float right that's what we call it as a real and again we have declared three more variables total locks total stocks and total barrels okay so total locks total stocks and total barrels i will explain these variables why are we using it so in my coming program okay so listen to me carefully and then this stores integer value so fine and the next one is lock sales stock sales and the barrel sales okay i will be storing the information in terms of real so that's what you need to observe here and then finally i have two more variables to check what are the sales that i have done and what is the commission that the salesperson will get so that information will be storing in terms of real so that's in the float this is what you need to understand so all these things is a variable declaration so fine we don't have any doubts with respect to that the next one what we have done is so you all know that in the question itself they have given what is the lock price 45 dollars I'm not considering that in the dollars. I'm just taking the value that's it. So for stock price, what is that? 30. And for barrel price, they have given 25. So now I have total locks sold is zero. Total stock sold is zero. And total barrel sold is zero. So right now, the value of these variables are zero. So because I have not done any sales right now, so it is zero. So fine. Now I'm asking the user to input okay as and when he visits the town okay he will be entering the one right so he'll be sending the short telegram by saying one lock sold remember that point one lock sold so he will enter that so guys now my while loop will run until my lock is minus one so what is this minus one so minus one depicts that end of the data there is no data after that so till then i will be running this loop again and again so fine in this loop, what is that I'm doing? I'm asking the user to enter how many stocks that you have sold, how many barrels that you have sold, 
and also how many locks that you have sold. So fine, the user, the salesperson is entering how many locks he has sold, how many stocks he has sold and how many locks and barrels he has sold. So all three things he will enter. All right, so fine. I'm fed up of saying this locks, stocks and barrels. All right, coming uh, jokes apart. So guys, he will enter how much he has sold. Then after that, you will be calculating. Okay, you will be updating these variables. How do you update? You all know that we have initialized this to zero already. So now I will update this. So total locks plus locks that he has sold. Total stocks plus stocks, whatever he has sold. Total barrels plus barrels he has sold. Sir, why are you taking this total locks, stocks, barrels again and again? Because please observe. Now I have sold, this is the beginning initial stage. So what is the total locks value? It is zero. So fine, let me take it as zero. In the first iteration, I have sold five locks. So right now it is five. Let me write it as five. Zero plus five is what? So it is going to become five. So total locks value is now five. In the next iteration, I will sell five more locks. I will sell how much? Five more locks. So total locks value is right now is what in the next iteration? So it is 5. In the second iteration also I will sell 5. So how much it will become? So 10. So that's why in each and every iteration I have to keep updating. That's why I have this. Alright. So hope you got this. So fine. I will be getting the total number of stocks, barrels and locks. How much I have sold. Okay. That information I will get it inside this loop. Done. After that. I need to, I need to print, uh, so what, how much locks that I have sold. So for that, I will print total locks sold. So in the same way, how much locks, how many locks, how many stocks that I have sold, I will be printing that too. Okay. And also I should print how many barrels that I have sold. I will also print that in this line. So fine, you have printed how many locks you have sold, stocks you have sold, barrels you have sold. What next? So you need to calculate the total amount that you have got from stock. You have got from locks and you have got from barrels. How do I calculate that? It's very simple. So lock sales. From lock sales, how much you got? So how do you calculate that? Lock price is how much? So you will cal you will put that. So let's check that. So lock price is 45. Lock price is 45. And imagine you have sold 45. Okay. So 45 into 45 will give you the lock sales. In the same way, you will calculate the stock sales. In the same way, you will calculate the barrel sales. All right, so this is the formula that you need to remember. So fine, now, so total sales, how do you calculate? The total sales is lock sales plus stock sales plus barrel sales will give you total sales. So fine, I have calculated the total sales also and I will print the value of sales, how much I have got. So after this, what? So I need to calculate the commission, right? So after the sales, I need to calculate the commission. Please observe carefully. I have told you, I have three condition. What is the first condition? So till 1000, so 10%. Remember this, 1002, guys, 1002, 1800. So 15%, so 1800 above, so 20%. That's what you need to re remember. So fine, so what is that I have here? If the sales is above 1800, so how do I calculate? So commission for till 1000. So I will be calculating the 10%. So fine, 1000 is done. All right. Then after that commission, whatever I have calculated here, so that I will consider it as a commission. So I will add that plus 15%, plus 15% of that 800. So why sir, 15% of 800. So please listen carefully. So for 1000, I will calculate 10%. 1000 to 800, 1800. So I need to calculate that for, I need to calculate that for 15%. That's the formula that I have here. So 1000 to 1800. So that for that 800, I need to calculate the 15%. So that is what I'm updating it here. So fine. So this commission is getting updated for 15%. So fine. Now you have calculated the commission 10% and 15%. Now, after that, so whatever you have sold after 1800, so after that you have sold whatever you have sold 1800, say for example, I've done so 1895, 1895, let me assume this is my sales. So how do you calculate for this? For 1000, you will calculate 10%, all right? So then after that, you have 800, right? For 800, you will calculate 15, is it? No, you will calculate for 15%. 
All right. So then after that, so what is the difference amount that I have? Um, above 1800. So I have 15. All right. For 15, I will calculate 20%. This is what you need to understand. So that's what I have done here. That's what I have done here. So finally, so after adding all these things, I will get my commission. So when I will do all these things, when my sales is above 1800. Suppose if my sales is above 1000, if my sales is above 1000 and below. So in the textbook they have given like this, you have to add one more condition. If my sales is above 1000 and below 1800, that's what you need to mention it here. But I have taken it as how they have given in the textbook, but you have to add one more condition. So sales is above 1000 and below 1800, that's what you have to give. So fine. So how do I calculate? It's very simple, same steps you have to repeat. So how do you calculate? For 1000, you will calculate 10%. Then after that, so again, the same commission plus 15%. Say for example, if my sales is 1115, okay, this is what I have sold. So for 1000, you will calculate the 10%. You will calculate the 10%. So how much I have sales? So 1115, that is 115. So for 115, I will calculate the 15%. So that is what I'm trying to do in this. That's what you need to understand. So finally, I will get the commission value. Suppose if my sales is greater than, if my sales is greater than 1000. Suppose if my sales is $1000, so then I will calculate 10%. So that is the commission that I will get. So this is what you need to understand. After that, I will print the commission what I have got. So this is what I will call it as a commission problem. So guys, this is the end of the session. So hope you have understood. I recommend all of you to watch thrice and four times to understand this again and again. I want you all to practice this too. By saying this, thank you very much.